Yep, we're getting started on the side here. Um, I've been doing Anna's hair for a long time, so you can see, I can see like where I've painted and everything, and it's like a nice soft grow. So I'm basically just doing the regrowth and bl blending it into what's already here. So I like to use a paddle when I paint, and I am using the new uh, Daveness formula for the Liberty Lightener. And I just give a nice little bead on my brush and just come in. All right, so this is exciting. Talking about the new Liberty Lightener. Those of you that are familiar with Century of Light came out a few years ago, three different lighteners, and one of them was a clay lightener. Uh, after a couple of years and lots of feedback from hair colorists and hairdressers, they wanted something a little bit more dust free. And so what I love about Dalvin is they listened and they reformulated and we're gonna get to see, Jenna's gonna actually mix this later to show you this kind of dust free and how to, how to mix it to get a great consistency. So I have a lot of clients that have very, very fine hair. Now Anna has very fine hair, but she has a lot of it. The thing is when you're painting hairlines with people with really fine hair, I just really get really fine with the brush and just barely even sweeping it across the surface. And I'll do one little one to marry it in here. So would you describe that almost like a W? I've heard people sometimes say like visually do the outside and then a little in the middle. How do you describe this it? This isn't even a W. So essentially I'm doing like this is a flat surface. I'm kind of doing two surfaces. Uh, okay. So we have this hairline surface that's this it's way. Kind of three dimensional. And then this way, yeah. I kind of always come in at this like horizontal or like vertical to the, to the scalp motion to get it nice and... So, I mean, a Soft. lot of this has to do with how you're holding it with your holding hand to get that shape and like you're not just flattening it. It's kind of like almost like a right angle here. I pull, here. I yeah. pull, I pull it out directly from where I want to yeah. see and make sure that the hair like completely like ribboned and make sure there's nothing, nothing is like twisting or anything like that. It's a great little tip. Like, so you've got like the front edge and then you've got the top. Yeah. So, because then when it falls back, you can see like right, that's where it's gonna fall. Like that's where the natural like fall of the hair is. And I'm also a really big advocate of like using the tip of your brush to come in if there's any like little bits and give your, like make sure you have your negative space there. I have to get a little touch and boom. Hey guys, I know a lot of you are just joining. I wanna welcome you. I'm Gerard Scarpacey, co-founder of the Hairbrain community. Today we are in Williamsburg, Brooklyn at the Davines headquarters. This is. This is where we are specifically is like an academy space where you can look forward to incredible education. And uh, we're doing some incredible education right here for you to kind of christen the space a bit. We're working with Jenna Foster. She is a editorial hairstylist and a colorist, which is interesting to do both. So she's doing shoots, doing celebrity hairstyling, but also does color. So I bet that keeps you real busy being doing both. It does, and yeah. I, I really like having that duality in my career. Uh, so that I, I'm never bored. <laughs> yeah. And the, the thing is, a lot of my, you know, influencer and celebrity clientele models as well, they're using me for their color and also on shoots. Like that's mm. also how I meet a lot of my clients is when I'm Interesting shooting. because, you know, in our industry, usually, you know, there's loyalty to hairdressers, but there's always even a deeper loyalty to the colorist. Like when you find a colorist, people are very loyal. So that's gotta be great for your, you know, kind of uh, editorial career. Yeah, Someone and loves the way you color their hair, they, they're not they, changing. They very much have have played into each other so well. And I've been doing this, like working like that for like the last seven, eight years of my career. So it's really, it's, you know, getting out of the salon and getting into that like editorial life has really <laughs> helped to marry that. But. Awesome. When I wasn't in a salon or doing color at all, it made me sad because I love to do this and, you know. Well, I definitely <laughs> want to get more of your backstory, but in the meantime, I want to give some shout outs. Uh, we've got Catherine Elizabeth Diana watching. She's got a question I'm going to ask in a minute. We're just about to get into that. Our friend Alicia Miller, a great colorist in the Davines world. It's been featured here many times. We've got Andre watching from Moscow. Catherine's in uh, Washington State. We've got, uh, I think you say it, Johanna, because it's a Greek name, it starts with an I, it's like a J, I think. Uh, watching from Greece. 
Let us know where you guys are watching from. We're in Brooklyn here in Williamsburg. We've got the beautiful Anna. She's having her hair colored today by Jenna Foster. Uh, balayage, this is, you know, we've heard many terms. We've heard so many terms, but I guess the, the core term is balayage. Balayage, hair and painting. Hair painting, is it the same thing, hair it painting is the same. It is the same thing, it's just the, you know, balayage is the French term. Oui, oui. It's to sweep. Yes. Now I notice you work with a board. I do work with the board. Uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of the top balayage artists like to use a comb. I, for whatever reason, got addicted <laughs> to this board and I, I don't know, I just keep everything so neat and organized and I like to get a nice coat on there and be able to just get that perfect like little bead to, to sweep. So. So let's talk a little bit about the Century of Light Liberty. Um, as we mentioned, this is the new improved formula. Davinez about three years ago or so launched this Century of Light family of these three different lighteners. Today we're focusing on Liberty, which is the clay lightener, really meant for sweeping, balayage, hair painting. Um, it's been new and improved to be more dust-free when mixing. So tell us about, you know, why you, what you like about this, what developers you're using. Uh, I've, like, I've been using the Liberty lightener ever since they first came out with it. And it's always been great, but it was very tricky to mix up, and I'll kind of talk more <laughs> about that. And anybody who's used the, the old Liberty of Lightener formula, you know exactly what I mean. It was like a cloud of dust when you would open it. <laughs> and let alone be mixing it, starting to kind of mix really, really slowly, uh, which is, you know, trying for the patience of, of colorists and hairstylists and busy in the salon. But the, the lovely thing is, is that I get such a beautiful, even lift, and the hair is always so healthy afterwards. So that's like clay, like what, what does that mean exactly, clay lightener? Like, it kind of like makes a shell on the hair? Is yes, it creates, it creates like its own cast. So I only like plastic kind of like the top or of each like section that I'm doing, more to kind of keep organized like where I've like switched, because I like to flip back and forth to the sides of the hair. I also uh, developer step, so I start with like a softer developer when I start and like move to a faster moving developer once I get to the top. To I finish. haven't heard that term before, developer step, but that's a great way of describing it. Some people like to use the same developer and they basically rinse as they work. Yes. Where you're, you're increasing the volume of developer to kind of balance yeah. it out. I'm, I've always been a colorist that likes to lift low and slow. And I, I don't like to use heat. And the, the, the fact is, is that I tend to do, I do a lot of house calls. That's, you know, 80% of my business. I don't have access to a heater, <laughs> you know, to, to putting, you know, a client under the heat or anything. So I have to use the client's own body heat, which is again, why I like to use the, the saran wrap, because it does help to hold that heat in there. But also when I develop her, like step, it gives me that control where I have a lot of time to to get the application on. So the idea of the clay lightener, it's like it encapsulates itself. So if it touches the other hair, it, it doesn't yeah, rub it off. doesn't it doesn't rub off. Yeah. So I, that kind of takes the place of foil. I'm not, do you use foils at all, or do you always paint? I only paint now. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I, obviously, I foiled for many many years of my career. Right. <laughs> but no, I. The only time I ever, I, I do have them. Um, I keep them around in case of like a major color correction for some reason if I needed to uh, really get in there and separate. But honestly, most of the time I tend to use the, the Saran. Our buddy Ben Brown is watching from England. All right, Catherine is dying to know how long you've been in the industry. And maybe you can tell us a little bit of your background. It's, <laughs> it's right. so great to say, oh, Jenna Foster has celebrity clientele, does editorial. But how do you get there? Like, you know, you don't just like start at a cosmetology school doing that. How did you get where you are and how long have you been doing it? It has been a journey, I will say that. I've done a lot of different things and worn a couple different hats. Obviously, I, I'm from Wyoming originally. I went to beauty school there. I mean, that's where all top hairdressers come from. <laughs> yeah. The like little local beauty school, and I worked in salon. Was super busy. I was doing cut, color, cut, or cut and color. Uh, I was doing pedicures, manicures. I was doing eyelashes. I was doing waxing. I did. I do all of the things. Now, how many? How long ago was that? Oh, this. So I've been a hairstylist come maybe eighteen years. Okay. So like in the beginning, we're talking 18, 16, 17, 18 years ago. Yeah. Which isn't really that long, you know? It isn't To that then long. come to where you are now. But to think about it being almost 50% of my life. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that's like. Well, I have been a hairdresser uh, the majority of my life at this point now because I'm 49 and I've been a hairdresser for 30 years. So in case anyone's wondering how long, I, I know we're talking about Jetta, but uh, 30 years, this is my 30th year. Woo and I'm doing some haircuts today. Yeah, the, the, the hustle is, is real, especially in New York. Um, but yeah, like I went to beauty school, I worked in salons in Wyoming, in Houston, Texas, and then it was a moment when I had the opportunity to go work in Dubai, um, which was not my own personal opportunity, but that of a partner, where we lived in Dubai for three years, and I was able to properly take a step back from working in a salon, which to be honest, I was very burnt out on. And I, I, I started doing editorial work because that's really where I'd been coming to New York a few times, uh, starting to assist on fashion week shows and had done a couple of like test shoots here and moving to Dubai kind of gave me the opportunity and the freedom to pursue that. Well, I was on set all the time and people were asking me where they should get their hair cut and colored. And I was like, well, me, <laughs> I'll do it. The hustle is real. <laughs> and so I basically set up like a color studio in my apartment and it turned into people asking me to come to them. So that's kind of where that whole business was born, was in Dubai and people asking me to come to them and how that whole synergy of them feeding into each other came from amazing let's talk a little bit about technique and then we'll get back to the story so how important is tension i feel like you've got like such a good even tension on the hair yeah tension is the most important thing in hairstylists in in the hair world period like we all learn it in beauty school it's it's on the test always you obviously don't want to be yanking your model's hair like and, and i've been and i've had my hair colored by those people it's like that pulls so hard it's like you almost just want to see the skin starting to give a little bit yeah and get that tension in there and then and I I'll show you on the next on the next section I'm gonna do here and this one I'm like my signature pieces and being a, a balayage artist is always making sure that these where the hairline comes out the furthest point these ones are always nice and bright when you see little kids hair this like corner is always where it's the brightest it's the finest hair so again I'm just using that super soft motion you can see all the negative space under there. And then you just lay it. Fantastic. And then I guess the next question when you're painting the next one is saturation. Uh, whenever we work with colorists talking about, you know, balayage and hair painting, uh, they talk a lot about the, you know, how you look to know it's saturated. Because like a foil, like, okay, once everything's covered and you folded it up, but this you're actually, you, you know, you're painting. Like you could maybe not put enough or you could put too much. It's very, if that's area, like if it's not wet enough, it's not going to lift. And if it's, um, what is it, Jack Howard in, in London, I love, he has this saying where he says, uh, if it's not white, it won't be light. Mm. <laughs> and I, I never put that term to it before, but I was like, I... I love it. <laughs> so if you're ever painting and you're kind of in doubt, it's like, oh, is that actually going to get? You so know? if you can still see the the hair color through it, it's not going to get. Where yeah, you need to get yeah. It. I'll yeah. kind of as I'm doing this next one, I'll kind of like talk through. So Anna, just a lot of people saying how pretty you are. <laughs> Thank uh, you. A lot of comments about beautiful model. Um, how do you? How did you and Jenna get together? She said she's been coloring your hair for a while. You've been through a lot of different things together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been through so much together. It's been three years since I've been going to Jenna to get my hair cut and colored. And we met through a mutual friend. So my bosses recommended her to me. They're like, Anna, please fix your hair. It's really <laughs> over-processed, very bleached, you know, wasn't at the best working at a high-end retail yeah. shop. <laughs> <laughs> and I needed hair to match that. And Jenna was the one who fixed it up. And it was a process, but I knew that Jenna was going to get it right. And I've always trusted her with my hair. Well, it's great to see like a real relationship. It's not just someone you met this morning and said, I'm going to color your hair for a video. Yeah, and this is what we're doing. You don't yeah. get an option. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Anna was already scheduled to have her hair done this week. And so we, we Bonus. Just decided to take take it upon ourselves to use her for for this hair brain live video. All right. So when we're talking about if it's if it's not white, it's, it's not going to be if it's not white, it's not going to be like. I, I do this almost, I've learned this in trying to transition people from, from foils to balayage, 
where I do these, like, I get these beads on here and then just paint up. Take that very, very, so you're not getting that super stark line either So you're way. saying you like start further away and then you I, kind I of... start usually kind of like where that regrowth like would be, you know, that like one inch, like kind of virgin application almost. I start and then I kind of just like go up. Well, um, I think you mentioned it, but I've already forgot. What developer are you starting off with? So this is actually, this is 25. I've mixed 20 and 30 um, developer for this. Normally with Anna, because she's so quick and easy to paint because I've been doing her hair for a while, I, uh, I slowed it down a little bit since we would be doing this. So I've added a little bit of 20 to it. But uh, yeah, I usually start with a 20 or 30, sometimes a 25, depending on how long it's going to take me to be doing the application and how much hair they have, their, their natural base level. Most of my clients I've been working with, I kind of know how quickly they, they process. You know, I, I can remember, I mean, obviously balayage has been around a long time, but let's just say five years ago, or let's just say five years ago, started to make this big commercial resurgence. <clears throat> I remember some people saying, you know, since it's open air, I use 100 volume, and then I know 100 volume in most places is illegal, but like, what's your thoughts on that? You being that it's not I don't. Oil, yeah. Like I said, I, I lift low and slow, and I don't use heat. Here's my here's my thing, and I have to explain this a lot of times to clients because they like they don't understand either. But the thing is, is like you can't overlift the hair, and I get it. You don't you don't want to have those like warm undertones. But the thing is, if you're not blasting it so that it's super raw, that's what makes it the most natural looking. Is when you're actually just like lifting it to where it would naturally be happening with the sun. Because we all know when we were kids, like we all had like natural highlights and it was really beautiful. That can happen again. But it, for me, it takes lifting it not out of a realistic state. So I, I honestly, I hardly ever use 40 volume even. Is, do you ever have to do like a multi-step process? Like get it to a certain place, wash it and do it again, like on darker bases? Or do you just say, hey, your hair's probably too dark? Or on, my, like on my brunette clients, uh, are all very, they want natural looking brunette. Mm -hmm. And some of them are, have their natural base, some of them are getting a base color that I do to cover grays. So it, it's like lifting through different things, but I like to never really lift a brunette past like a level eight for the, uh, for her highlights. Cause it just, it gets too brassy, it gets too raw. And most of my brunettes, honestly, when they come back, they barely even need gloss to do the, their base color. Any advice for maybe a hairdresser out there who's challenged with explaining that? You know, because obviously sometimes clients have, they can be bossy or have unrealistic expectations. Unrealistic expectations, you know, for sure. And it sounds like you very much control those expectations in a very professional way, which we should do as professionals, because if we're doing things that are bad for people's hair, it's not exactly. good. Exactly, I'm gonna switch. They might the want hair. it, but that doesn't mean they should have it. Yes, this is, this is, it's a very, very real thing and very real conversation that I've had to master over the last, yeah, you know, 17, I imagine. almost 18 years. The, uh, just be real with them. Like, even if they're a new client, because honestly, most of these conversations are ones that I'm having with clients who are, who are new to me, is this is what's been happening and why you always feel like you're brassy. It's not even that you're brassy, it's that you've been overlifted and the, toner like the constant of putting ashy ashy toners on it has made it muddy well you know i just i have to give a shout out here jenna what you're doing is so interesting to people that you have one of the largest viewerships that we've had in a very long time oh really uh, Yay. Over, not to put too much pressure on you but you have over a thousand people i love it no i, I love right an audience now, watching you live Usually I have my clients' kids as an audience. Well, now you've got a thousand <laughs> they're, they're people in my face. They're like, what? all over the world. Guys, let us thank you for being here with us on a Saturday. Um, Jenna has such a busy schedule that we have to do it on the weekend. So we're doing, this is just part one. Here's the best part. If you're all loving this, you come back tomorrow, you're gonna see Anna's finished look, and then Jenna's gonna show you some of her editorial styling braiding. Uh, we all love braids, and braids can be 
just such a great go-to option for with people, especially with longer hair, when you want change, something fun, but you don't want to cut off all your hair. So we're going to see some fun braiding tomorrow. Let us know where you're watching from. We're in Brooklyn, New York at the Davines headquarters. You can see by the beautiful display of, uh, you know, some of those beautiful products in the industry. I think that makes a big difference. I always say, if you want to upgrade for your salon, make sure you have products that look cool. It's like the artwork on the wall. Um, She's working today with the newly reformulated Liberty, which is from the Century of Light uh, bleach line, the lightener line. Uh, there are three different lighteners in this. There's an oil lightener and two different powders, one for kind of highlighting and on scalp and then one for painting. Um, this has been reformulated because hairdressers said, you know what, it's a little too powdery. Uh, you get a little bit of a cloud when mixing. So the great news is that's been completely uh, reformulated, changed to control that. And Jen is going to, at uh, some point here, she's going to show us a little bit of her mixing tips. Yes, when, when I go to work through the top section in our curtain fringe here, I will be mixing up a fresh batch of lightener. I usually will have like one, uh, one formula that I'll do for the back and maybe a little bit of the sides and then a top and then the fr if there's a fringe, I'll have a separate fringe formula. And again, I do that just for timing. And again, I like lift, like to lift low and slow, let it just go to where it's gonna go. But you can see how fine these these lines are. And if you can see the product actually like starting to put its little like cast on it, and it doesn't once it's there, it doesn't move. Can you talk a little bit about your choice of, of tint brush? Um, there's so many out there, and we see all oh, this is. I've seen people use paint brushes, like literally. That looks like you're using kind of a traditional. I think it's a Davines brush. It is, yeah. it is the, it is the Davines brush. They really mimicked my favorite brush, which is also the Fermar uh, balayage brush that comes in, like everybody knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, the, it's the three pack. We saw it at hairbrain.pro. Yes, I, I also, um, but the Davines brush is, it's literally basically the same. It's a slightly softer bristle. Um, yeah. And then I like uh, I like to paint really fine. I paint really fine, and it's partially because I've spent so much of my career a doing foils, but b then going through and taking people out of foils and into balayage. So being able to have that really controlled fine line that I get with using a a, a board. So let's get back to a little bit of your story. You went from Wyoming to Dubai. Totally. That well, I went from still. Wyoming to Houston. Oh, to Dubai. To Dubai. Yeah. <laughs> and in Dubai, I mean, so how, how did you get trained along the way? Is it all self-taught or did you go out of your way to go to different academies, find mentors? Uh, I, just because of the locations that I've lived, I wasn't able to like be in like a super high-end salon where I could have like these amazing mentors, right? I grew up in Wyoming. <laughs> it's like I, there was a lot self-taught. But before I even graduated beauty school, I did Redkin's hair color certification. Mm. Um, I come from a Redkin background, mm -hmm. but great, I, yeah, uh, very reputable, great place to start. Yeah, yeah, it was it was so easy, and I learned so much about color theory and and negative space and highlights and all of the amazing teachers that I've had at the uh, you know their academy and everything. But it was really. Balayage, I, I was self-taught because about the time that balayage really blew up was when I moved to Dubai. So it was me watching a lot of these Instagram <laughs> videos like mm -hmm. we're doing right now that kind of is how I learned how to paint. I was already painting really softly into foils anyway. So I already have that, that hand and I was an artist as a kid. I loved, I loved watercolors and sketching and blending. So I already have that. It's kind of like a feathery. That, that lightness, yeah. that lightness of hand. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a Bob Ross. You know, I've, I've always felt like whenever I've worked, because um, I don't do color, I, I specialize in cutting and I do a lot of razor cutting. And I've always felt like balayage done the way that you're doing reminds me very much of razor cutting because like the holding hand has to be very taut, very organized. Um, and then the, the hand that's cutting or coloring has to be like a butterfly, really light. Because if they're both aggressive, forget it. Or if the holding hand is like messy, forget it. So it's yeah, like, well, especially because I do so much of this where I kind of am painting two sides where I paint the front mm -hmm. and I'm also like painting on top and I like to like go through and like make sure there's a little bit of that negative space. 
in there so that it grows out nice and, and soft that you have to, you can't go too far. And especially when you have this fine texture of hair, it's, it's absolutely paramount of importance that you're not pressing too hard with your, with your paintbrush. So obviously you're doing a bit of a retouch. Anna's your client. You've done her hair before. So like visually you kind of look at where it's grown out to. I don't know if, it's, if, it's your, if, if you guys are able to see this on camera and I'll put my glove back here so you can kind of see. You can see where the regrowth is, right? Mm -hmm, totally. Yeah. All right. So typically what I like to do, and this is regardless if I'm touching up my own color or, or somebody else's, like a new, with a new client, I like to hold my fingers like rib in the section and hold it right where the color starts. So then that way I'm not going too far into it. And then that way I can kind of blend it in. And you've seen me doing this where I kind of like take my finger and just so that we're not getting too much saturation on what's already been lightened, but it will blend into it. So again, just holding it like right there. And Anna's really great. She weirdly doesn't have a lot of baby hair. <laughs> she weirdly doesn't have a lot of baby hairs growing around her face. So she's a very easy client to paint. But sometimes with these face ones, I kind of will pull it forward a little bit. And get so that's again front of And get like this, so that if you do have a client that has all those little baby hairs, you can kind of like get in there. But for the most part, I just pull it right where your fingers are or where the regrowth starts. You know, and then kind of swoop swoop these. What if you do get in. started and like you get a little too like blotchy right at, at front? Like, is there a way to kind of work your way back? So that's that's where I was saying like mm. use use the, your oh, okay, and just kind of create that negative space. Just mm. make sure the tip of I usually have like a little wet towel. I have one in the the drawer here where I can kind of like clean the tip, clean clean yeah. the tip, and you can just come back through and just lightly lightly get in there. And then in terms of overlapping the previous hair, you just obviously start to just, fade it out. Just, just enough so that you don't have like a line of demarcation. I always kind of like do the opposite. Like, you know, usually up here is a little bit lighter. I always kind of do everything a little bit of an angle. Does your work uh, typically involve toning or do you usually just yes. let the lightener do the work? I, I, I always tone. However, like I said previously, I don't like to overlift the hair. I don't like to have to tone to correct what I've done. I want to tone to enhance what I've done. So a lot of times we're adding, you know, beautiful gold tones because it makes it look rich and expensive. And again, like gold and warmth and like even coppery tones, which, you know, Anna kind of has previously, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't mean brassy. <laughs> Like warmth is good, it's reflective, it's shiny, it's healthy, it's, it's vibrant. We've gotten to this point where people are so afraid of things looking brassy, but that mostly comes from the hair being over lifted, mm. being over processed. And when, as you go through, like, um, so the section looks like a little bit what we'd call diagonal forward. Yeah. And then how thick, as you work up, how thick are those individual that, sections? That kind of depends on the person and how much light they want to see. Anna's is very, uh, I, I want to, like, have a good bit of negative space and keep it really soft. Like, I only do Anna's hair, like, every five to six months. So this, we did her hair last beginning of June. So it's been about five months now since we've done it last. You can see all the, the previous regrowth there. Uh, I do just under an inch to a half inch. And I usually kind of make a little bit of like a fan where everything is a little bit closer towards the face and a little, you know, fades away towards the back. What would you say to people that maybe worry that this is going to end up looking like a single process rather than dimensional? Like, is that... Well, the whole point, the whole point you of think, oh, like I have to weave so that I have like you know, dimension. How does it get dimension Well, if you can kind of see, uh, well, there, there's so, that's the great thing about the balayage is that there's so much creativity that can, that can happen with the balayage. But if you kind of see back here, the, the few pieces, pieces that I had previously done is that I, in towards the back and even towards sometimes the back sections, I leave a lot of negative space, almost like you would with highlights, but I'm not picking them up because if I had to come down and like over, you know, 
overlap anything. Like we want it to be heavier down here and be a sheet, you know, like a, a veil on top here. But I kind of always do a little bit of this and you'll see it again, I'll demo it. So would you say you tend to, most people tend to want to be a little bit brighter towards the face and then more dimension towards the crown? Exactly, the yeah. again, it kind of just goes back to where hair lightens naturally. Yeah. That when you watch like little kids, how their, how their hair naturally lightens. So again, getting that bead in there and I'm coming in and almost like you would with foils. It's like create these, these fine little lines. Well, I, I think that's why it ends up looking more natural because I mean, nobody has chunky hair color naturally, you know, it's like, it's not like an inch of one color next to an inch of another color. That just doesn't happen. It's always mingled. In, it's, in, it's always mingled and yeah. super soft. And I kind of always like to work on the, the shop, the shape of the head and, right. and diagonals to create that, that movement. But I like to do these, these veils of color. So the great thing about balayage and, and Dax, if you want to come catch and here, like you're only coloring the top of the hair. You're all, like nothing underneath here and because it's clay lightener, nothing is coming through down here. Mm. So it's so- It sits on the surface. It sits on the surface. And so that's, even within that like depth of it, it's gonna go from a lighter to a bit deeper on the bottom part of the hair. Yes, exactly. Mm. And again, it's kind of the same thing, like where this piece, I won't necessarily do it so much, but when I get closer to the face, I love face, the subtlety. I mean, you're literally working within a half inch of hair and it's gonna be brighter on the top and then deeper on the bottom. That's a really interesting way of thinking about it. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the whole, mm -hmm. the whole point. And when I do color corrections or somebody who's been like, you know, had a ton of foils and is very the same all over, I'll actually go through and like pull out this top right, and but low light this. You can actually see it when you do that. Look at that. That has nothing. Yeah. So there's all your depth. That's like should be a big aha moment. I think yeah. for people totally. That's that's your depth. Yeah. It's not like left to right. It's yeah. like top to bottom. And this is Anna likes to be you know that kind of like baby blonde placement. I have clients that really, uh, especially burnout clients, that really kind of want that very much that accent effect. And what I'll do is I'll actually like step where it's higher up here. I'll, I'll do it on the next section. I'll demo that on the next section, actually. Let's talk about your section. Um, you kind of have a triangle in the front here, and then you've got it sectioned off at the crown, and you've got these two major panels on either side. Is that fairly typical? That's kind of typical. It? I'll say it's kind of typical. Um, the reason why I have this, this front section is because she's got the, the curtain fringe. And so when anybody's got a fringe, I always section the fringe off separately. So that is why... That is. Janice McQueen is wondering if you can confirm the thickness of your subsections. Are they about a quarter inch, a half These inch? These ones are probably three quarters of an inch. Mm. But it's I kind of like the thickness of my sections varies on the density of hair, how blonde the client wants to be. So thicker hair, thicker sections, or thicker hair, thinner sections? Depends. Sometimes okay. thicker hair has to have thinner sections if they want to be more, more light. More right. And if you want to have more of that negative space. So it's like X, Y, Z plus equals this. It's not exactly. just one and exactly. one equals two. There's a lot of factors. Yeah, there's, there's so many factors. And this is where, you know, like, seriously, guys, I've never actually had a balayage class. I, some of the people who I love to watch most are it's it's so varied because everybody has such great little watching people paint and it's great and this is what i do miss about working in a salon is not seeing how everybody does things just that little bit differently well that's why we have things like hair brain live so you can see all different hairdressers from all over the world and you know constantly be exposed to different people exactly uh, karima it's, it's is beautiful. wondering if you could do this with a high lift tint instead of a bleach You've ever painted I have. Yeah. I okay. <laughs> I do like to talk about this. It's more difficult because you really have to have great control over your product. Um, I have some brunette clients who lift insanely easy, and they want just that most subtle. Sometimes I'll even like vary it with like a ten volume and a lightener. But you have to have really good control over your color because the color is wet. It doesn't have, it doesn't get that hard shell the way that a clay lightener will, or even any lightener will kind of like turn to powder again, whereas color is color. So you have to have really, really good control over your product. And I, again, even when I do paint with color, which is not very often, uh, <laughs> 
it it has to be super super fine and I really don't press hard at all like you really just want to skim that top so I want to thank all of our viewers if you're just joining us um, I'll let you know we're with Jenna Foster Jenna is uh, editorial celebrity stylist and colorist this is um, part one of two this is we haven't really ever done this before believe it or not we're gonna have the same model get colored today and she's gonna come back tomorrow and Jenna's gonna show us the, the color and actually style the hair showing us some braids so we get to see this really multi-dimensional artist showing us color and styling we're here at the Davines headquarters you can see a little bit there's a space here within the headquarters here in Brooklyn, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, dedicated to education. We'll be using it for Facebook Lives. Uh, Davinez will be using it for some classes. I want to get in here and do some classes myself. Um, so it's a fantastic new resource here. Um, I want to thank Davinez for the ongoing support of Hairbrain. It's because of um, a brand like Davinez that we're able to bring you great people like Jenna. I want you guys to know Jenna doesn't work for Davinez. She's not an employee. She's a hairdresser who chooses to use the product and has a great relationship and they asked her <clears throat> would you like to come in and work with with Hairbrain so this is completely unlike uh, you know this isn't just like someone who works for the company doing their job and talking about it she chooses this and I wanted to ask you that like why do you choose Davinas you could work with anything yes um, and, and, and to be fair I have not worked with a ton of color brands like I mentioned before like I was with Fredkin for geez half my career and now I've been with Davinas for the second half I I chose Davines because they were really like budding in the Middle East, actually. This is when you were in Dubai. This is when I was in Dubai, so when I learned about Davines. And because their Redken isn't there. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Uh, there was a few styling products. There was quite a bit of L'Oreal, but I had to, you know, go outside of my comfort zone and learn something new. I would also like got more into like health and wellness and been practicing yoga for many years. So I wanted to find a brand that was a little more naturally plant-based, had a little bit cleaner products, all of that type of nature. And when I read and heard about Davines, I was like, this is, this is it. And pretty much instantly made that relationship with Davines Middle East and turned into Davines North America and was traveling around doing education with styling and this is really this is the first color education that I've got to do at Davinash which I'm really excited about because I've been using their color for almost eight years now. Well you're doing a fantastic job and you've got lots of people saying you know how much they're enjoying this and uh, that it's a great lesson and again just for myself I've had a very long relationship with Davinez and uh, touching on what you said there you know the the key uh, phrase that Davinez is sustainable beauty um, so it goes beyond just making products that work. It's they have to really make the world a better place. Um, so much so that Davines has become what's called a B corporation, which is something that only happens for certain businesses. Which it I means, love. Yeah, it, 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 honestly, my clients love that that I can talk about this. Like I have a lot of clients who work for clean brands, sometimes clean beauty brands, mm -hmm. and are wellness you know gurus mm -hmm. on Instagram and such. And it's so important for them that I'm using these super clean products mm -hmm. to... Yeah, well, Davines is certified that way as a B Corporation. It means that all of the things that they do not only help to drive profit and make for a great business, but are making the world a better place. And this is an intense certification that people go through. So again, always um, just grateful to work with such a great organization that brings great products, great ethics to the industry, and, and great education like we're having here today. And I like to just kind of put plastic on top of a section when I move on to like a new, new moment. So I'm going to come back over to the other side, finish up this other top piece. We'll do this one and then we're going to move on to our, our fringe. Okay. So we, the back was pre-done. We've done each temple really delicate. You know, here's a good, you can actually see it here, like developing beautifully. Yeah. This is yeah. again, the, it's also the really.